The Sharp Owl 6-in-1 Knife Sharpener and Survival Tool is the must-have item for your outdoor lifestyle. It features two V-notch sharpening slots, a tapered diamond rod for serrated edges and gut hooks with a special groove for fish hooks, a fire starter, and a high-pitched emergency whistle. First, let's look at the number one tungsten carbide sharpener. The tungsten carbide sharpener is for coarse sharpening and quick edge setting to help restore your double beveled straight edge blade in several strokes. The arrow shows the proper direction for pulling the blade through. Make sure that the sharpener is on a flat surface and that the blade is inserted fully and vertically into the sharpening slot at a 90 degree angle to the sharpener and that the cutting edge line is parallel to the flat surface. Then pull the full length of the blade through from heel to tip. The tungsten carbide material and the optimum preset sharpening angle is fast and effective. Then switch over to the number two ceramic sharpener for fine honing. This will polish the blade to a finished edge in several strokes. The Sharp Owl 6-in-1 also features a tapered diamond rod. This is perfect for sharpening serrations and gut hooks. Simply slide the rod back and forth several times on the area you wish to sharpen using medium firm pressure. An added feature on this rod is the special groove engineered for sharpening fish hooks. Another impressive feature is the integrated fire starter. When your matches are wet or your lighter runs out of gas, this can be a lifesaver. Just remove the rod and pull it quickly and firmly across the tungsten carbide blades. This will give you the spark you need to ignite your tinder and start your fire. Finally, the 6-in-1 includes a built-in emergency whistle. This is perfect for long-distance communication in the wilderness, whether it's your hiking party, your hunting dog, or even a rescue team. It emits a high-pitched blast that can be heard from very far away. And the reflective band on the side can be used as an emergency signal mirror. The Sharp Owl 6-in-1 Knife Sharpener and Survival Tool. Sharp Owl, giving you the edge. Hello there, I'd like to introduce you to the AnySharp Suction Base Knife Sharpener. You stick it down onto your work surface like that, it doesn't move and you don't have to hold it. All you need to do is take your knife, any steel bladed knife. Just make sure that it's clean and dry, start at the heel, end up at the tip. Hold it upright and slide it back towards yourself. Pull it through there like that about half a dozen times, give it a clean and give it a try. If it's not as sharp as you want, do it all over again. This little knife costs less than two pounds. You don't need an expensive knife if all you require is an absolutely razor sharp one. Any type of knife, blade, edge or steel, this knife is a professional sabatier. It costs considerably more. You sharpen it up in exactly the same fashion, but the fundamental difference is that this knife, once it is sharp, will stay sharp for an awful lot longer than the inexpensive little knife. Now, both of these knives have got your regular, ordinary stainless steel blades. This one isn't. This is a serrated bread knife. Now the manufacturers of these will tell you that you can't sharpen them, and the reason they tell you that is basically so you go and buy another one. Just put it in there, take the pressure off. If I press down hard, it will lock up between those teeth and it won't budge. Take the pressure off and glide it through there like that, nice and gently. Give it a clean, that will make that one of the sharpest knives you've ever picked up. Now all the knives I've shown you so far are made from stainless steel. Some knives, however, are made from carbon steel. This is a hunting knife, it's made from carbon steel, you can always tell because it discolours on the blade. It's a lot, lot harder than stainless steel, you simply pull it through there like that, perhaps for a second longer, give it a little clean, and the beauty of this is that once it's sharp, it will stay sharp for an awful lot longer than a regular stainless blade. The other type of carbon steel you get is drop forge carbon steel. This is incredibly hard. This is a pointing trowel made from drop forge carbon steel and the regular job is to crack through bricks and rake out cement joints. I put a cutting edge on this from scratch and it took me 10 minutes. I did it just to show you that no matter how blunt your existing knife is, no matter what steel it's made from, if you can do this to a trowel in 10 minutes, the bluntest kitchen knife you have will be razor sharp in just one or two minutes. Now it doesn't matter how big the knife is that you wish to sharpen. The rule is if you can get it in there, you're going to sharpen it. You simply pull it through. This is probably the largest knife you'll ever see. You simply sharpen it by pulling it through there, nice and gently, right to the very, very tip. Give it a little clean, and away you go. 
as I said, it doesn't matter how big the knife is. The rules of the game are if you can get it in there, you will sharpen it. You simply pull it through there, nice and gently. You give it a little clean. And this is why we call it the world's best knife sharpener. I've been a butcher for over 46 years. These are the best. They're quick, clean and safe, and they work every single time. Sharpening your dull knife just became easier with the WorkSharp Guided Field Sharpener. Five sharpening stages and built-in angle guides allow you to restore your blade edge quickly, consistently, and easily. The compact size makes it portable so you can stay sharp on your next outdoor adventure. Like other WorkSharp products, the Guided Field Sharpener is packed with features. It was designed specifically for your sharpening needs. To restore a dull blade, begin with the coarse diamond to repair any damage in the edge. Progress to the fine diamond to refine the edge. To do so, rest the blade on the guide and push along the abrasive. After 5 to 10 passes per side, use the fine ceramic rod to hone the edge for another 5 to 10 strokes. Finally, polish the edge with the leather strop. To sharpen serrated knives, nest the beveled side on either the small ceramic rod or the fine side of the large ceramic rod. Push and pull back and forth for several strokes per serration. For curved blades, begin sharpening on the coarse ceramic rod. After five to 10 strokes, progress to the fine ceramic. Finish the edge using the leather strop. The guided field sharpener can sharpen a wide array of camp, shop, and garden tools. A few passes on the fine ceramic will quickly restore the beveled edge of scissors. Fish hooks can be resharpened on the ceramic rod using the fish hook setting. Hatchets and axes can be sharpened using the coarse diamond. Broadheads can not only be sharpened, but can be assembled using the internal wrench. For more information about the guided field sharpener or any other WorkSharp products, visit WorkSharpTools.com. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Gatco Edgemate Sharpening System. So what I've got here is I've got a clamp for clamping the knife and I've got five sharpening stones of different grits to do different jobs. Also comes with a bottle of oil and two screws for doing a little larger blade. But what we want to talk about is getting your knife ready to go out in the field before you leave home on your bench or whatever you've got. So I'm going to show you how to mount your knife blade into your clamp. You lay the knife blade down into the teeth, tighten up the first thumb screw, finger tight, then take the black thumb screw, tighten it up so you get a good firm grip on the tip. Then you check, make sure your knife's firmly mounted, it's not breaking away from the clamp. I'm going to use to be able to show the video better, I'm going to use the Edgemate Easy Grip clamp holder. And so I need to resharpen my knife to get it up and ready to go for, for going out in the field. Now my edge is still in pretty good shape. It's a little dull, but not bad. So if my edge was really bad and wavy, I might use the coarse stone to start off with. But the extra coarse stone, the black is an extra coarse. That's if you've really damaged your edge and, and really got it nicked up. You might start there. But since mine's in pretty good shape, I'm actually going to start with just the coarse rod. To get these rods out, obviously when you pull them out of the box, they're compressed. And if you look at it, you know, it's too short to do the work. Real simple, no screws or anything else. You just pull the rod out some to extend your rod. And put oil on these. I put oil on the stones before we got started to save time. Pick the angle you want. There's an angle guide here for what you, uh, what you might need and uh, what angle you might, might want to use. I like to keep a 
little bit of a little finer edge on some of my stuff. So I use a, a 19 degree on my hunting knives to make it so I just slide through really easily. And to do this, all you're going to do is, is cut up with, with the stone. So I'm going to place it down and run up with the stone. And you want to overlap some and hit the whole edge three to five strokes per area. The neat thing about this system, the stone is about one and a half times wider than the competition. So you get more work done faster. Makes it really easy to get a nice, clean, even bevel across the knife. When I've got that done on one side, all I've got to do is pick the clamp up, flip it over, and do the other side. You notice there's a plastic where my fingers are setting. Those are finger guards to keep me from accidentally dropping my finger below and cutting into the blade. I know as long as I have my fingers above resting on that plastic, I'm not going to cut myself while I'm doing this project. It's really important with like a big kitchen knife or something of that nature. When I finished, I got a nice smooth looking edge, uniform edge, uniform width all the way around because the angle guide kept me exactly where I needed to be. When I finished with the uh, core stone, I just compact it, put it back in the case, and I'll grab the next stone up, simply pull it out, and do the exact same thing with the medium stone. Simply flip it over and do it again. Once done with that stone, we just switch to the fine stone, which polishes the edge up for us. And as you see there, I pulled the rod all the way out, no problem. Just stick it back in, no damage done, easy. Go to the, come up through here with the fine stone. Find the fine stone is after that edge is already set. We've cut that edge and we've got that angle exactly where we want. Now you don't feel as much resistance on the stone. Works real hard. You're not really pushing hard down very hard while you're cutting with any of the stones. You're just letting the stones do the work. I'm picking up, going past the blade, setting down and stroking up through the stone over the blade. This makes it that way. I'm getting a nice clean edge. And as I said, I'm not putting a lot of pressure down on the knife. I use the same angle, both sides, every time for every stone. If I wanted to change the angle of my, of my knife, I would need to go back and start over with a coarse stone and go forward. And whatever you do, whichever stone you start with, whether even if you start with like an extra coarse, 
you have to work your way all the way up to find. Don't skip a stone because you won't get the results you're looking for if you skip over a stone. One other neat thing you'll notice on the on the aluminum holder that I've got here is we've actually got six angle guides. That's something a little bit more than what the other competition in this field has. They they have less less angles, so you've got less options. So with that done, we have a perfectly center edge. So you see the width of the edge all the way around, even through the belly. On both sides is very uniform, very center, and very sharp. And that's how you use the GATCO Edgemate Sharpening System.